All right, guys, today is the day of the great TPMS reckoning, if you will. Try to be a little dramatic there for a little fun. But I'm going to go ahead and take this tire off. I was going to try to do it on the, um, while it was on the car, and it is possible. But I'm going to go ahead and take this tire off and change out the uh, TPMS module that's here. And, and if you remember seeing in my last video, you'll know that I've already programmed this right here to fit in this car. And I also have some OEM ones from AC Delco as well. So whichever one that fits at the closest weight is the one I'm going to use. And how are we going to break the bead on the car? Well, today I'm going to be using this tool here. This is the XB450, which is their cheapest version. And the, the next one is the 452, and it comes with an extended um, arm here, a second arm. I think that everything should go well with this one based on what I've seen on videos. So anyway... That's how that'll work. So let me go ahead and get this tire off. We're going to bust that bead with this bead buster, install this TPMS system, and then we're going to reactivate everything with the X tool scan tool. All right, so I got the tire off the car sitting here. Got me some soap water here and got me a, uh, a valve sim removal tool here. Plus, it also has a little... Um, I guess valve, uh, I guess the Schrader valve remover here on this end. So uh, again, all of this stuff I have linked in the description if you're interested. So let me just go ahead and uh, set the camera here. I'm gonna try to get something lift this a little high when I actually do the bead buster. This right here, I'm just gonna spray soap water around the bead here. Let me try to get a little more sort of feel a little bit more. Spray a little water around the bead here real good. Get it nice and uh, uh, moist, if you will. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take out the, uh, the uh, Schrader valve and the TPMS here. This might be a little loud here, so maybe you might want to mute the video, but I'm going to probably take it out kind of slow. I think these things are reverse threaded, right? There we go. Not too loud, actually. I thought it was going to be louder than that. Not loud as I quite anticipated. Let me set this over here so I won't lose this. Well, I'm changing the whole TPMS sensor and valve stem out anyway. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, as this air comes out, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. I'm going to try to set the camera up in a different way so I can make sure I get a good shot on how to use this uh, D buster. All right, guys, so I got the bead busted out here, and, well, this is how it works. You use this right here to, uh, let's see, let me undo it here, because I've been testing it out so far, and I believe that I need the XB452 for this tire, so I may have to hold this video off, so let me see here. You want to open this up, tighten this around the rim, this down inside the bead, and then make sure this bolt is sticking perpendicular up, then you use the... Um, impact driver. So let's try that again. Okay. Because like I said, I've been, I've done a little testing with it so far, so I won't be fumbling so much with it on video so y'all can really get the gist of it good and make sure that, um, you know, you just become confident with the tool. So, so far, it's not that hard to use. I just believe that I need the XB452 to extend it on. That's just what I think. I think this here. I think if this does work, I'm gonna have to some kind of way force it to work. So we'll see how that goes. And you wanna get this, again, get this fastener right here perpendicular with the tire so it'll push straight down on the bead. Cause if you have it too far coming this way, it's gonna push out. If you have it too far coming back this way, it's gonna kinda, it's gonna scoot a little bit forward. So you want this pretty much 90 degrees straight in. I think that should be good here. Now, let me take this off here and put it on this uh, impact. Okay. Okay, got it. 
See that bead there? See that bead there? Let me show you. Look at that. The bead is, let me get my flashlight out so I can give you a good picture here so you can see it good. A little pocket flashlight. Oop, oop, watch out here. See that bead is off? So I need to go ahead and take this out because it's not that stable. So technically, I need the XB452 for my car. So I had that extended arm, but the XB450 will work. You just got to be a little bit careful with it. So that's, that's pretty much the gist here. All right. Oop, took that all the way out. <laughs> Get back in there. Okay. Now I take off my, take off the bead. Take this off. I'm gonna go get my other 19 sockets so I don't have to switch them. I'm gonna go get another 19 socket so I don't have to switch them. So I don't have to do a switch around it here. All right, so I got one part of the bead busted. And you wanna, oh, one other quick tip is that when you do this, you don't wanna do it next to this. You wanna kind of work your way kind of around to this part here. So basically say maybe here, here, maybe like here, that should be sufficient. So let me um, find me another 19 socket. I know I got one somewhere. I got a short one right here, so that'll work. Yep, we'll use that one for this, for the, for this one. So that way, everything is all good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slide this around again. Hopefully y'all can see this and make sure I can get this pretty good. Because again, you're going to need to, let me slide it back this way, because you're going to need to do this about two to three times. So I'm going to try to go like right here. So this is where I'm going to go right here. Okay. So again, the first part is again, you're going to need a little, oh, you're going to need to go in between. Obviously, I was thinking about going here, so I'm going to have to go here. You're going to need a little muscle and you probably want to wipe this dry. Because again, I believe that's what kind of, I, I had this to slip on me earlier. So, let's see if we can get him under there. And again, I tell you what, if you in the market to uh, get strong, <laughs> you can go work at a tire shop. Because man, tires are heavy and tires take a lot of strength <laughs> to uh, work with here. All right. I mean, I enjoy getting this exercise. That's one of the added benefits of being a DIY person that you really do get. I mean, it is some physicality that you'd have to have and it gives you a little, you know, not like going to the gym, obviously, but definitely takes some, it'll give you some, you, know, you, you can gain some strength and some, you know, some flexibility from doing so. Not just working on cars around the house or anything, so. All right, so let's see, almost 90, not quite. See what y'all see on the camera, yeah. Almost 90 here. The part that I'm looking the least forward to is putting in, is our, uh, is our uh, restilling the bead. So let's go with here. Okay, got that part of the bead that down. I'm sure you heard that bounce in. Okay, so we need, Oh man, I can just, I think I could be able to push this out. Hold on. I think I can, I think I'm making, I think I might can, uh, I think I might can, uh, oh, let's learn a little technique there. I think I might can go ahead and finish breaking this by hand. Let's see. Still kind of hard, because I got most of it coming around here. And one other thing you want to be sure to do is not to, Oh yeah, I got it. Is not to uh, break the back bead off. So as you can see here, I'm gonna try to go around the tire so you can see that the entire bead here is broken. So the next step is to get some wood down in here so I can actually get to this. So let me show you the progress here. Let me go get my old Ryobi light since I like to use, I like, well, I don't wanna get them dirty here. Well, I, I take my gloves. I need to change my gloves anyway. So I take my gloves off. You know, that's one of the added benefits of being a DIYer too, is that you get to keep some clean tools because your tools don't get that dirty. As you can see, 
the bead all the way around. I don't know if I can get all the way around here to show you, but anyway, it's broken all the way around. And um, well, the next step, the next step, let's see, there you go. Yeah, so the next step is I'm gonna take some um, wood right here and kind of, well, I think I'm gonna take the bead buster. That's what I saw one guy do. He took the bead buster, put a piece of wood right here, smush this down and put some two by fours in here. So um, I'm gonna stop the video for a second. I need to go uh, find me some wood and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I had to go cut me two little pieces of two by four. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna just set it off to the side. And I got this little piece here. And the idea is to use this kind of to wedge down in here some kind of way first, and then put the two by fours on the side. Uh, I, I saw a guy who did it with the bead buster. So let me try to um, <laughs> figure out what exactly he did here. Uh, I'm not sure what he did. I'm not sure how he did. I think he might have squeezed this down in here first. Maybe I, I should. Maybe I might need to cut this. I'm not sure just yet. Hmm, I'm not sure yet. Or well, maybe like this. Can't remember exactly what he did. Oh yeah, maybe it was like this. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we get this down in here first of all. All right, there we go. Oh, I can see the TPMS sensor. It looks like I may have to put the big one in there because again, I'm gonna try to put the one that's closest to the size. All right, so now, all right, there we go. All right. Oh yeah, I can see it good. This is interesting. Getting into the whole TPMS thing now. I really enjoy this actually. So I can see how the world works really, how it's really going on. All right, so again, we're gonna get it all the way down to, to get this uh, fastener here to 90 degrees. Here, let me make sure you can see that. Can I get this to 90 degrees? And then we're gonna push it straight down with the block of wood. So that way I can get my two by four in there. Cause I may need to take a break after this. I may need to go in the house and eat and probably charge on my microphone. Cause I think my mic was not low, but lower than I like it. Cause I sort of make sure that it charges. But anyway, you will just see all the good footage. Okay, so is that about 90 degrees? Yeah, that's about 90. So let's go in with the, with the, uh, Oh yeah, there it is. That's aftermarket too, it looks like. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay, let's go. If this goes off. I wonder what this, this piece of wood is flying in my face here. Okay, so hold up before I go any further. Just let me see what's fit in here because again, this does not look terribly stable, but uh uh Let's see here. Let's see. Okay. 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 Got that piece there. Let's see if this works. Try not to do, not to be too dangerous here. Let me slide this tire just a little bit. Be a little careful there. Not to drop anything. That's got some tension. Oh, it's not too bad, but let's see. I may need to go down a little further here. Let's see. Just make I'm just holding it to make sure. Okay, there we go. That should be good there. Let's go ahead and take this out. Okay, that should be enough. Should have enough room. Oh yeah, that's enough room. So let me show you. Let me take this off and show you what I got. Should have had this two by four. I could probably slide this and just probably slide it a little bit by hand here. It should be enough. I mean, it's enough room, but if I could slide these a little bit. All right. So let me show you what I got. All right. So here is the TPMS sensor. So the one that I'm going to use then is the one from X tool, being that it is roughly the same size. Um, the one at uh, X Tools weighs about 13.2 grams. I don't know how much the other one weighs, but definitely this here appears to be, I guess it appears to be out the market. I don't know that. I'm about to take it off and find out. So it's gonna be interesting to see what this is. So I think I need to get a Torx. I don't know what Torx I need in here to get that off. Let's see here, but I know I got some Torx because y'all already seen them in my video that I posted not too long ago. So let me go. Hopefully I didn't put those back in the house. Let's see here. Okay, got some torques, bit selectors. 
and I need my little, oh, finally, I get to use this thing. Wow, amazing. Is this for Torx bits here? I think I can use this with a Torx bit. Is that quarter of an inch? So let me show you. If I can't use this one, I can use the other one. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Look at this guy here I bought. This is a micro ratchet. <laughs> Amazing. I, I totally forgot I even had this. I bought it from um, uh, O'Reilly's of all places. And this thing is pretty good. I got it. Uh, I think I watched Caddis, Caddis Maximus talk about this thing. But look at this thing. This thing is neat. Look at this. Look at that. Even you can put it on a um, quarter of an inch, put, you know, put an extension on it. And look at that. That's a pretty amazing. So you just, uh, I think, I can't remember what you do. Can you just take this out? I think so. I mean, let me take a look at the set here and see what I got. Looks like, so this little set here comes with it. So, man, this is, I forgot about I had this. So anyway, I'm gonna have to figure this out. This here. Oh yeah, push it still a quarter in it. So yeah, I should be able to take that anvil out of there. Now, how do you take the anvil out? I don't know just yet. Oh, well, what's cool about it, look at this. It even has a little spinner on it right here. That's, I don't know if you can really pick that up, but it's grooved. So you had to spin it by hand. So this thing is really meant for tight play. It's actually well constructed. It's made by Power Torx. I don't know if you can put a light on it here because for some reason my light not that good today, but as you can see, it's pretty cool. I mean, I can link this from O'Reilly's um, to show you guys. I'm just trying to figure out how to get this. Oh, here we go, just to push it out. All right, so I got that, that came out. So now, I don't know what torque size work here. I'm gonna just grab one and see, will it even, will it work? Okay, that does fit. Okay, let's see, does this even work here? I don't even know what this even work. Cause you gotta be careful here, cause if some stuff fall inside the tire, then well, you have another job on your hand. Okay. I think this mic would fit. I just can't get it. Because again, I'm just learning here how to do all this stuff. So I think this will work. May have to get something else here. Hold on, let me take these gloves off because I can't. I don't want to get my hands too dirty, but I have to sacrifice my hands a little bit here. I don't know if this is even in there, but we're about to. I don't know what torque size it takes. I should have reset, but uh, that, that almost fits. So it might be the next one. Might be the next size up. Let me push this guy out of here somehow. I think this is the next size up. Yep. Okay. Push that guy out of there. Let's put this one in there. This will fit. The problem is that they're a little too long, like for me to really, it's hard for me to really it's hard for me to really get up in here because I actually don't want to break it. I actually want to see it because it's still good. I mean, it works. I mean, all I got to do is put a new valve symbol on it, so I don't want to break it. So let me let me get some light here so I can see exactly how this goes. Okay. May have to. Oh, there we go. It's coming, but I hope it does not fall. That's going to be the only problem. That's going to be the only problem if it falls. So let me take my time to do this. So this, cause this, will take, this is going to take me a few minutes. So I don't waste video time on this. So I'll be right back once I get it out or close to it anyway. All right. Finally got it out. This here is a, uh, let me see what brand this is here. It says made in the UK is all I saw on this side here. Does not say what, uh, trying to see, does see a brand or anything? I'm just out of curiosity here. Oh, Schrader Electronics. So maybe this is an actual Schrader branded. So all it really needs is another valve stem, but I'm just going to change this out. Oh, I'm it's not holding up high enough, sorry. I'm just going to change this out and um, just put a new one in there, just because, you know, just why not? So next tool I want to use here is oh one other quick thing i'll tell you how i ended i got the uh i used this right here to get the um the screw 
that was right here started pretty good. And then I used this right here. Then I used these pliers right here to just keep turning this screw and make it easy. I'm sure it's an easy way to get it, but I just wanted to make sure that I did not break this because I want to keep it because there's nothing, um, it's nothing wrong with it works, but I'm just replacing the whole thing just for the hell of it. All right, so now what we want to do is grab this puppy here and uh, we're gonna use this right here because this right here is made out of like a nylon material so it should not scratch your rims. So you just screw this puppy on and you yank it or use leverage or however you wanna do it. So I think that I should, wait, wait a minute, let me get a piece of wood here. Let's see here, this might be higher enough to do it. Let's see. Let's see here, is that high enough? Yep, there we go. Just like that, you see that, uh, pull that right out. That's the old valve stem here. Looks a little cruddy. No wonder it was leaking. I mean, you can see that it's basically, feels pretty hard, pretty brittle. Let me put a light on it here, because again, my, I mean, for some reason, this position I'm in, I, I guess you can still see that pretty good, but I'll put a little light on it anyways. Um, let's see if I can set this up here, give you a little light here. So as you can see, I don't know how well you can see that, but that thing is a bit, brittle around the edge here. You can definitely see that it's uh, cruddy and um, just worn out, I mean, for the lack of a better term. So um, there you have that. So anyway, we'll be changing this out. Let me uh, stop the camera, get everything set up. And we, uh, and actually, oh, one last thing, forgot. When you change these out, um, uh, there's another piece on the inside here. I, did, I just saw that actually. So anyway, look at that. I don't know how well that's coming through in the camera. Let's see how well it's coming through, but that's pretty worn out there, as you can see that there. So um, actually that looked like, yeah, oh, actually that just broke off. I probably just snapped that off when I pulled it through, but still like you can still see this little green, this little crusty, not green crusties, but right here. So one thing I forgot to mention is um, when you do this here, a lot of people, um, you want to make sure you clean this hole out. So that's, um, again, let me see here. I know I have some, I don't know where I put them. I have some, uh, some brushes here. I'm looking for my, um, my, uh, brass brushes. I can use this here for the moment, but I'm looking for my, I got like some little tree. I got a package of them somewhere. I don't know where I put, oh, here we go, right in my face. So anyway, I have a package of these. And uh, so, package of these little guys right here, as you can see here, a little different size uh, brushes here. So I'm gonna just grab one that I think might fit in there pretty good. Let's see. That's probably a little too small. Let's go with this one here. Let me just go grab my other tool here. I think I left it in the house. Not entirely for sure. Yeah. Let me go run and get that right quick. All right. Had to go get the old, the old Milwaukee screwdriver here. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to clean this hole out. Hope nothing really falls in here. Let me see if I can get you a better shot here. As you can see here, let me lay that down for a second. Try to get so you can see what's going on. It's kind of, see how it's cleaning that out a little bit? Just kind of clean that out a little bit. Let me make sure. Let me see what I'm trying to get a good glimpse and see what that looks like. Let me get my light here. Oh yeah. She looks nice and clean and probably want to clean that surface off as well. So let me let me get me another, see what I got over here in my magic box here. I don't know what I have. I know I have something I can do. Oh, I can just probably take a bigger tree and get around it. That's what I'll do. Let's do that. Set you right here for a second. Where's that box go? I got all my stuff out here today. Oh yeah, this, I don't know, that should do it. Let's see. Let's try this guy here. Should be able to get down in some kind of way with this. Let me go back over this way. Try to get a little light here so we can see exactly 
what's going on here. If I can get, oh, I think that might be, let's see if I can get us a little light here. Oh yeah, that should be good. All right, so as you see, it's a little cruddy here. Let's see if we can. See, that definitely cleans that off. You definitely want to. Clean that off pretty good. Uh, I don't think I really have to come from the inside here. I'm gonna just see if there's anything on the inside here. Just see what I can see here, cause I can't see. Oh yeah, it looks good on the inside. I can. I don't. I, you probably. Can, yeah, you probably cannot see it. But anyway, just take my word for it. So now, that still's a little. Let me just get a little. I'm gonna just get a little paper towel here and just see if I can just wipe this just a little clean i think it's smooth enough to really not have to worry too much about anything because i mean that should probably fit in there just fine let's see here now that looks a bit better let me see let me get my light let's see how that looks there yeah that looks good that looks good enough <laughs> yeah could be probably better, but I'm pretty sure that's good enough because I've seen people just do this without even without even um, doing this at all. And I've seen people do this. And um, and so anyway, I think it's a good idea to clean your make sure you clean this hole out, because if some stuff has some buildup and it, it might be too much that might um, cause your stuff, your valve sim still to leak. So I'm just go through it one more time just to give it one one last go the other way now. Cause it's still smoky. Oh, I think I just chipped my rim. Yeah, I did. But um, these rims are kind of flaky anyway. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's all right. I just chipped my rim there a little bit. But anyway, these rims are kind of flaky anyway. They're kind of old. As you can see, there's a lot of pitting in other places. I mean, you can't see it, but I can see different little places where it's not too, um, where it's not with integrity. It has held up for quite some time, but it's definitely you know, fading away. So with that said, let me see what I have here. So now this little guy is the one that I have already programmed to replace this guy here, this uh, TS100. And don't worry, I'm gonna relearn all the tires just for the sake of doing it with the scan tool so you can see that this will not only act, you know, relearn its own tire, but it'll relearn other tires as well, which if you've seen my other video, you would probably know that by now. And one quick comparison here. So let me show you. Um, here's the other unit here. It is a little, the old unit is a little bit longer here, as you can see right here. But um, oh, they feel, let's see, let's see. This one might, I mean, they feel about the same, close enough. I mean, this will be the one you'd have to go with. And I'm pretty sure if I put this in here, it may not cause the, can't be that far off, you know, if I put this one in here in the place of this one, so. All right, so the next step, the only difference, is I might end up changing them all because this one is going to have this metal, um, this metal uh, tire on this car. So I might end up changing all of them out because because um well that's just what i may do not today so this here will just be i'll do all of those off camera actually i am going to change them all not today but i'm going to do them all off camera we'll put this one in here see how everything works make sure that i'm good and competent with doing all of this then i'm going to change the other three but again this video right here should help most people out on how to execute this process all right so now we just want to, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna try to um, um, just take this. I just wanna see how everything goes before I actually commit to doing anything this yet. So I'm gonna try to stick this through here because you put this through here and then you screw the thing on the top and tighten it down. And I just wanna see how this piece here goes. Okay, so this piece, 
would go. So you would put a flat piece. Oops, let me drop that in. So you would put this flat piece up against the up against the actual inside of the tire. I think you would put it like this, because that's how it was with this car. Like the this the, the smooth piece was towards the inside, and this was toward the outside. So anyway, this is uh the hole here. You put this in here for the retaining screw. Let's see how far do you stick that in there. I think you let me see. Can you put how far can you push it? Then you stops right there. Yeah, I can see that. That's nice and flush in there. Sorry about my camera angles today. I'm doing a different little different camera angle that I'm normally doing. Retaining screw. Let's see if you can see that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole unit together. And this makes this a lot easier because you're gonna put this through and tighten down the cap instead of pulling through a valve stem. So this is gonna have you know, um, this on the outside of the tire, this rubber grommet on the inside of the tire, and that's what will keep your tire um, safe and keep it from failing. So let me see, let me see something here. Get this guy out of here. Got all my tools out here today. A lot of tools out. See here, so anyway, I'm just putting that retaining screw right in here. I'm just going to get it started like this first before I, because it says only, I think it's only to uh, four newton meters. So this right here does not need to be super tight. So um, I don't have anything capable. Let me check, make sure I don't have anything capable of doing four newton meters. I just might actually. Let me check my small, uh, I don't think I do, but I'm going to check my, I'm going to check my um, other wrenches here. Let's see here. It's my little, I got my little Harbor Freight when I have not used it in a while. So I guess I'll see if that one will do it. This one here, yeah. This one might do it. I think it's this. I think it's four net. Before I do it, I'm going to actually look it up online right quick to see. Let's see, can it even go down to four new meters or whatever it is? Nope, it goes down to 5 point, I can't, that's the one thing about it, I can't hardly see, I think it's 5.1. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at this wrench, I can't barely see it, that's the one bad thing about it. Etching on these icon wrenches, I barely can see it, but I'm pretty sure that's point. Uh, I think it goes down to yeah, 5.0. I think that's 6.2. Yeah, it has to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah, two, yeah, because it's got two, two zero. They gotta be 22.0. So let me see how many, let me see how many Newton meters this said. I don't know where my uh my phone at. Let's see here. I got your little, use your little QR code right here to get the manual real quick. We'll go to the manual and see how many Newton meters it says. Because again, I may just have to do this by hand because that means that it's not, um, again, it was four Newton meters. It's not a lot at all. I mean, obviously. Let me see, let me hit download right quick. Let me open this up. Okay, now. Yes, it's four Newton meters to screw the nut and then assemble the bonnet back onto the rod valve. Put this back in and then you screw this down and uh, the nut on the valve, hold on, let me make sure. And start it, hold up. That was, that's, that's actually this part. That's four Newton meters, this thing here. So let me go back to the actual, putting the retaining screw in. Uh, uh, yeah. Replace the washer. Oh, it's a replace rubber washer. 
correct TPS tire pressure sensor nut torque for so it does not say I think I may I think I may end up um, mentioning this to them that they don't have an actual specification for the actual screw on the inside. I guess the screw on the inside, it does not make a difference. You can put it as tight as you want, as long as you don't strip it, because it's just, it's just holding this to this. You just don't want to put this and this too tight together because then it'll squeeze too much and not have a nice seal on it. That's what you don't want to do. Then, then you won't have that nice seal. So, all right. So, let me just tighten this up a bit more then. Because, again, I want to make sure that's good and tight. Let me go get my little... Because, again, I didn't tighten that down just yet. I just put a little force on it, but not much. I just want to put a little bit more. I just want to make sure that's going to... Okay, so that feels... And I don't know. It has some uh, Loctite on it. So even if you just get it nice and hand tight, it should be, it should be good. Yeah, see, I just got it. I'm just turning it to the stop turning here. Hold on, let me get it in the camera. I'm sorry about the camera angle. I'm just turning it, say don't turn it anymore, and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do right there because it has that blue lock tight on it. So that should kill any type sort of vibrations here. So far as this, um, this says four, Newton meters. I don't really have anything to do for Newton meters. I may just do five. I don't think five would make a difference, but we'll see how that goes. Get this guy back in here. Okay. Make sure that it's, that it's uh, kind of, I guess, evenish. Hold on, let me drop that. <laughs> At all, after all this work, then go there and drop that. It wouldn't be that hard. You just had to, you just have an extra little job to do. So I'm just going to. Oh, man. All right, let's put that on here. There we go. There we go now. I assume if you've done this five, because I don't know how tight. Let me, just, let me just undo that a little bit. So I don't really know how tight. So I'm going to do five Newton meters, because that's the extent to this, to this here. So um, I don't know what that size is. I'm going to guess that's a... 13. Let's see. Is 13 too big or too small? Let's see. I think it might be slightly too big. Let's try a 12 millimeter here. Okay, let's go with 12 millimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me get a pair of pliers here so I can hold the bottom far so I can get it closest to the specification as possible. Because again, you torque it, you're going to have to hold this in place at the bottom here. Let's see here. This is a, wait a minute. That's 12. Let me get my 3 8 12. Wrong. Uh, that's what I need. I don't have a quarter, a quarter of an inch um, torque wrench. That's my problem. So maybe I'll have to get one of those one day. We'll see. All right, so I'm gonna hold this here in place. And then when I hold this in place, as you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. I'm holding this here in place like this, right at this little collar right here. You can see that metal collar that I'm holding on to. And I'm gonna keep the uh, sensor as straight as possible against, you know, just, just straight. And then I'm gonna torque it with the um, torque wrench here. Because again, this is probably something you wanna get at least so close to right, could that's, let me see that again. Yeah, five point. It says five point one. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Let me see how tight five point one is. All right, boys. So I got it at. Uh, uh, again, this is the only thing I'm capable of doing. Is uh, uh, what I did was I put it at uh, five point one newton meters. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna. Um, I, I went ahead and what I did was I clamped this down with some pliers to make sure that, that if some nothing was wrong with the torque wrench. So I have no. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to just loosen it just like a hair. Since I put it at 5.1, I'm going to loosen it just a hair. All right, so I'm going to assume that that's about 4 because it's less than 5, but it's probably not less than 4. Okay, that feels pretty sturdy in place. So 
And that looks pretty good in here. So let me show you. Let me let me show you what it looks like in here. Oops. Oh, this guy. All right. So let me show you what it looks like. Here. So that's it. That's the installed product. Looks pretty good. Everything is pretty even. Put the uh, flat side to the back. So now the next step is to reseat the bead. So this is the part that I am not, I ain't gonna say I'm scared or nothing like that, but I think I've heard people saying that, you know, you definitely wanna wear probably eye protection. I have on glasses, so I'm gonna just roll with that. Let me turn on my, um, well, let me turn on my pump here. Turn this puppy here on here. And turn this on. This is, I love this air compressor. This thing only takes like a, like a minute and a half to fill up and it's quiet. So you can see. That California Air Tools, pretty good. All right, so now everything is installed. I'm, I'm terribly excited about this action, so let me just point this back this way. Let me take uh, these blocks of wood out. All right, so now what you want to do is go around and spray, spray the bead I've seen a lot of people use different things, but um, you can use Windex, but I'm gonna just use soap water here. So go around, spray this bead, let me, spray this bead really well with, uh, with our soap water here. Okay. should be hope I didn't overdo that but I think that should be good all right so now let's get to the business So I've seen people leave, take the valve stem core out or leave the valve stem core in. I'm going to just leave it in for the, right this moment to see how that goes. And then, um, well, we're going to take it from there, move that out of the way. I highly recommend getting one of these. These are the nice, I uh, forget what brand this is. This is made by, uh, uh, who is this? Milton. This thing, I, I like it. I'm going to tell you why, because it's, you, you don't have to bend down that far to stick this on the tire to put air in it and you can kind of see by it and hold this back. And I have to bend down so far. And the only good thing, and the good thing about it is that, but the only kind of bad downside is that you don't have a backlight on this here. So if you're doing it later in the evening, if you got your headlight with you, you'll probably be fine. So anyway, we're gonna try to push some air up in here. So let's, I guess, let me see if I can make sure I can get you on camera right here. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and let her rip and see what happened. I'm gonna try to turn around here a little bit, but, um, Anyway, let's see how it goes. Wait a minute. Oh, put this up here. Uh, I, I'm, I was paranoid. I forgot to hit the button here. Let's see here. Hold on. I wish I had. You know what? I do got one, but I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Okay, it looked like it. Make sure that that... Uh, that bead ain't seated on that side. Let me check that tire pressure. Let me see what it say, because I don't want to go too high. Okay, it's only at 10 PSI. Turn my head here a little bit. Pay attention to that, that's 20. Woo, that's dead, the holy crap out of me. But anyway, that's one good way to do it. If it's a little piece, just hit it and that soap water help it slide right in. So now, let me get this to the correct PSI here, which is, I put 35 in my tires. It does feel weird putting the air and something in your face. You know, normally it's on the car. I've never done it like this, so I can see why this is dangerous because it's right here, right in your face. So if something was to get breached and explode, it would um, it would hurt. 
like all that air coming up out of there, if it didn't bush, it likely would bust your eardrum. So likely, I should have worn my earmuffs out here with this just in case. All right, so I'm almost there anyway, 35. Okay, almost. All right, there we go, perfect. All right, woo, glad to get that over with. Never done that, but it, it like I said, it's not super scary, but it feels like because it's like right in your face, if something was to happen, um, it might not be too pretty. So, all right, so now let's uh, spray some soap water on this valve seal. Let me stand this up here. Let me put some gloves on real quick so I don't get my hands too dirty because I got to run in the house real quick. All right. Wow, this has been a little thing. So I know this video is kind of long, but hopefully, you know, um, it, it resonates with you because, you know, if you're working at stuff, you know, at home, like it, it's not going to be like ideal. So now when I go to do this again, I know exactly what to do. Like I could probably do maybe 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes per tire and have it knocked out. So let me lift this up here. All right. All right. Wow. All right, so now let me put this right here in the valve stem so you can see. Let me turn the valve stem this way so it's a little bit up high. Okay, so this, as you can see, let me get some light on it. All right, so hands are quite dirty here. Don't, I like to keep my tools clean, you know. All right, so we turn this on. That is the, let me try to get it at a good angle so you can see right straight down in there. All right, so let's spray some soap water on this. And if we have no air hissing out of here, this was a success. So, all right. Okay. Nothing. Good. There is nothing. Um, let me get you a little closer so you can see. There is nothing fizzing. There's nothing moving. I see nothing. And wow, I'm excited. I see nothing at this point. So hopefully that the beads set correctly and I don't have any leak from around the bees, but um, pretty much that's gonna conclude this part of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go reinstall the tire and then we're gonna go and turn the car on. And this right here should already work because well, it's already, I pre-programmed it last time let me blow that make sure yeah yeah i don't see anything yeah so um it should already be reprogrammed but i'm gonna still do the relearn process just so you can see how that worked with the scan tool so i can relearn this one just pretend as if this one and the other three were not um relearned and um i'm gonna just go through and relearn them. so i'll be right back here in a second all right, so I'm here in the car. I'm going to go ahead and put the car in relearn mode. So then I can use this scan tool to go around. Although before I do it, I'm going to go around and I'm going to check out the tire. So let me just go ahead and connect this. Let me get the screen recording on first so I can overlay this so you can, guys can really see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to start recording now. And I say start recording now so I know right where to put this video in so I don't have to look for it. You know to do the overlay so anyway um let's go into the tpms we are going to go to america's uh buick let me get out of the car for a second here and because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm just gonna check out the census first of all again just, just for the sake of it i know it's not i know it shouldn't be any issue but let me go ahead and do this here this is going to be a uh the lacrosse 2009 2010 315 megahertz now let's go ahead and get a trigger right, for this tire that's the left front all right and so the rear left front uh right front let's go to the right front here go ahead and hit a trigger okay now right rear let's go ahead and hit the trigger get this 
because I know that I programmed it, but I'm just checking them all just for the hell of it. There it is. Still programmed just from last time. And then I'm going to do the left rear. So what I'm going to do is that. Okay. So at this point, you know, if you've done like I did, if you went ahead and pre-programmed your sensor, you can just pull off and begin drive. Okay, but well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me show you what I'm going to do. Let me pull this out here. Got a lot of mess out here. Y'all just don't know. I got another video coming up that's going to involve this bulb, this here. But that's the V200, but the V200 Pro and the starter here. So let me lay this down here. My next video, you're going to want to check that out. You're going to learn some stuff. All right, so let's go back. Okay. Okay, and let's go to, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just wanna see how something go here. Special functions. Uh, let's see here. Thought it was TPMS. It must be under TPMS. I would just say in the special funks that they have um, the TPMS uh, relearn. Let's see here. Okay, let's back out. Go back into TPMS. Let's go to back to Buick. Go to uh, where's that lacrosse? 2009-2010. Do you want to clear it? Yes, I do want to clear last sensor data. So we already done programs. So let's go to relearn. So set what it's doing is giving you a uh a uh thing here how to you know relearn everything. So we're gonna do the ODB relearn and see how that goes. I think static relearning is where you tell the car to relearn it and then like you can go through the instrument cluster. And um, I may do that in a separate video, but for now, I'm just only gonna do this ODB learn because I think that'd be the best way to go. Relearn here. Trigger all sensors before learning. Okay. So, okay, so I did the first part correctly. So let's go back and trigger all the sensors. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, this shouldn't take but a second here. Don't worry, I'm gonna try to cut this video and make it, um, I, I, this video is kind of long, but I'm gonna try to splice some things out and make it uh, you know, as short as possible, but still, I'll try to add bookmark to it as well. Okay, the right rear. Let's go back to right rear again. Where's that at? It is right here. Then go to left rear. Now we're going to hit relearn. So once that happens, again, I'm doing this as pretend. So just so if anybody uh, wondering here, if you have, if you just, for example, started watching the video for whatever reason. Um, although I do not need to relearn because I program my sensor from my other tire, I'm going to um, relearn it like this. And let's go to relearn. Let's do OBD2 relearn. Let's go here. Let me go back here. I guess I can do it right here. We need to relearn. VCI is connecting. Oh, ooh, that scared me. I guess it's relearning to each tire. Yep. It's relearning as it go along. Because I can see the tail lights flashing. Let me see if it does it again. Yeah, you saw that? Yeah. So I guess it's going through its rounds and that's the indicator that it's in that relearn mode. Okay, almost there. Let's go here, look at the headlights. Could the headlights do it as well? Let's see, let's do it again. No, it did not do it again, let's see. We're working on it. Let me get back closer to the VCI to make sure I don't get too far away from it. That could be another thing. I'm gonna just set it right here in the car. Relearn, ODB relearn success. 
Bam. Let's see what we got now. There we go. Yep. See, look at that. Now it's showing up that you see the number that's the uh, the uh, hex key from the um, sensor matches the exact number inside the ECU, which is indicated by the little check engine like icon that you see. So anyway, I do appreciate y'all watching and taking this uh, going, I guess, on this little ride here with me to learn how to redo a TPMS. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm going to do my other three tiles once I just use this, just let this sit for a week or two and just drive it around, make sure there's no issues. And then there you have it. And then don't forget, got another video coming that's going to involve this, this, several component, a component or two under the hood. And uh, it's not going to necessarily involve this one. This is the V200, but it's going to involve the V200 Pro. And I'll link those in the description. You want to take a look at those before the new video come out. That's it. Uh, Take care. This has been a good one with the X-Tool uh, IP819TP. Uh, so take care and I'll see you in the next one.